Damn, Chids, we're back. Fun Bag Friday. Fun Bag Friday. Get the bat, whatever we're talking this thing. No, no, no it's Fun Bag Friday. Something in my nose. Segment. <laughs> <laughs> the, the show is called Fun Bag Friday still, and a segment. Oh, yeah, we have a segment, Casey, Casey at the bat. Bat. Okay, we're getting, we're getting, I understand. Yeah, we're starting I'm to organize our thoughts here a little bit. Yeah. Also, beautiful week up here in the <laughs> Northeast. Finally, holy crap. The weather's finally wow. breaking. It might be summertime. I uh, know. Every time you think it's summertime, it's like, oh, yeah, it's 65. There's like a 20. Damn, yeah. 25, yeah. Nails in the head. Nails in the head. Yeah. But anyway, so let's get, we got so much baseball to actually talk about. News. Guys are hot. Teams are hot. Yeah. So let's start a little Casey at the bat with some crappy news, I hate to say. <laughs> Max Scherzer yeah. out six to eight weeks with the oblique. They already got the Grom. Who, I mean, they're just yeah. doing so well. The poor Mets, like, they just don't need these injuries. But I guess that's how baseball works, huh? Well, dude, I think the biggest thing about baseball is you have to realize, go look at any team that wins the whole thing. Mm. You you have to have horses in your minor league system. You have to have free agent signings where your depth is, is you know, your depth off the bench, your mm-hmm. depth in the pen, your depth in the rotation has got to be there because you're going to have injuries. Now, I don't know if you think that DeGrom, your, DeGrom and Scherzer, your two right. biggest horses <laughs> right. in the league, were, are going to be hurt. For as long as they've been hurt, you know, the is probably not coming back till late June, July, you know, with the um, with his injury, and then that, and then McGill, who's their, you know, young kid stud yeah. who ended up starting opening day, right. he's out too. So Scherzer being out six to eight weeks is a huge hit for them. I just really believe, dude. There's something about the Mets. There's something about Buck Showalter. I figure he'll figure out a way, even if he has to go to the pen more, if he has to mix and match guys. You know, Chris Bassett's done a nice job in that rotation so far. So, but that's a huge one, bro. You huge lose one. Scherzer for two months, yeah. and you, the Grom's already out, and you know you're trying to get to where you want to go i mean that's a that's a big hit yeah big you, hit. you know one thing that you could be hopeful like take a positive out of out of a negative oh uh lindor got off to that super hot start he is right. really he's done almost nothing offensively for a couple weeks which you know he's going to so hopefully you know for them you know you lose sir shares or your pitching going down but you still got a right. superstar shortstop who, who can can hit seven home runs in 10 days so right. you know hopefully right. he can kind of pick it pick it up he is the superstar that's why you got him so well they got the you know the bat the bats are the bats have been swinging out alonzo's got a you know a good thing going i mean they mm-hmm. got that that lineup put the they put the ball in play better than any team in the league so you know top to bottom they're really good yeah well but then another little debbie downer topic but there's a positive out of this one is bryce harper's got that what is it the ucl ucl yeah he's got a, yeah. Like a slight ucl tear which is the owner collateral ligament which is basically tommy john i saw him a few months ago like a month ago um earlier in the season you know throw a ball in from right field he kind of grabbed his fingers like mm-hmm. oh man like you know that Pins nerve you know what i mean yeah, dude. Yeah. So like I was like, man, something's not right. Well, the great thing about being the universal DH now, the DH being in the in the NL, it saves the Phillies because if that's the case and he has to play right field, he can't play right field right now. So it, the DH saves the Phillies from Bryce Harper's yeah. injury. Now he can still be in the lineup. He said it doesn't hurt him when he hits. He's still raking and doing his thing. So, yeah. you know, it's uh, the, the, the universal DH, you know, strikes to be a positive for one of the best hitters in the game, your reigning MVP. Yeah, that's great. But also, oh wait, let me go back quick. You've had, have you had the oblique situation when you played? That's that's not Dude, that's terrible for one, baseball players. You know what? Yeah. Well, when I think back, I one time had an oblique sl- oblique strain in 2006. Well, people used to say, "Hey, you can't pull fat back in the day." I'm like, "Listen, I'm jacked underneath," you know. So, but I remember in 2006, I'm with the Pirates. I get a slight oblique strain. And it's at the end of July. So, like, I'm in a dicey situation. And then it was Sean Casey bobblehead night in PNC Park, bro. 50,000, whatever, 40,000 people, whatever it holds. Sold out crowd. I'm like, oh, yeah. And I'm feeling pretty good. I'm ready to play. And I remember um, I remember um, Dave Littlefield, the GM at the time, calls me in his office for the game. He's like, hey, listen, Casey. He's like, I know it's your bobblehead night, but I can't play you. I'm like, what do you mean you can't play me? It's bobblehead night. Pittsburgh, you know, it's my hometown. He goes... Yeah, he goes, uh, we're going to trade you tomorrow. <laughs> what? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, and I'm like, all right. Well, and I was with the Pirates. We're the worst team in baseball. Right. So I was kind of excited <laughs> at the time. Yeah. But I wasn't excited. I wasn't going to play on my bobblehead night. And, and then the next day, I got traded to uh, the Tigers? Detroit Tigers. Next day or the day after, the, two days later, oh, I got wow. traded to the Detroit Tigers at the deadline. Wow. For, what do you uh, call that going from the, at 
that year that's going uh, yeah, from the, the shit house to the pen outhouse <laughs> to the penthouse. Yeah, nice. Yeah. And, then, and then next thing you know, you hit like seven hundred in the World Series yeah. a couple years later. One, so fo- one phone call, one phone call, bro. I went to the worst team to the best team in baseball. I'm like, thank you very much. Oh my god. Jeez, yeah, Lila, and what? Jim Leland called. He's like, Can you meet us in Tampa tonight? I was like, Hell yeah, I'll meet you in Tampa. Unbelievable. Well, yeah. one guy got traded a couple years ago to the New York Yankees, and nobody liked this deal. I know I did as a Yankee fan. But it was you junk. did or did you oh, did or did I loved it. But people were like, "Why are you going to yeah. take that contract?" Whatever the guy I'm talking about is Giancarlo Stanton, formerly Mike. And and uh, but what I was excited about at the time, I'm like, "I'm sorry, I don't care." First of all, nobody's going to fight this team because you have Stanton and Judge, and they're just <laughs> monsters. Dude, those those guys are so big. Is, standing yeah. standing next to them on the field, which I had before. Yeah, they are two gigantic right men. and tell everybody you are <laughs> what are you six four and a half yeah i'm six four two thirty five yeah. i felt so small to those guys they look like literally look like robocop's doppel <laughs> doppelganger both That's of amazing. them like holy <laughs> shit is this robocop's doppelganger <laughs> but so i want to start let's start on the stanton side of things because again like he's almost like one of the most undervalued power the guy's hit 50 home runs in a season you almost breaking records you got to give him credit where it's due and he's raking this year raking Dude, I tell you what, talking to Booney, you know, uh, last year about Stanton, he's like, bro, if he stays healthy, he's one of the best hitters in the game. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, you just think he's this home run hitter? Yeah. Dude, Stanton can hit. Go back and look at his numbers, like his, you know, his numbers when he was MVP. If you can mm-hmm. pull those up, like back yeah. with the Marlins, like, dude, he's one of the best hitters in the game. Right now, he's hitting right, he's right at 300. He's hitting 299 right mm-hmm. now. He's got 11 bombs, 35 rubies. He's got a 9-12 OPS. Mm-hmm. And he's playing a little bit of right field, too. He's dh and playing right field. He's a, not, a bad, not a bad right fielder, too. He right. used to be a, really good. But, you know, I think, you know, he just has had some injuries. But you go look at his career stats. I got him. He's a career 270 hitter, mm-hmm. 358 homers, almost 1,000 RBIs. Right. He stole 42 bases with a 900 OPS. He's still an elite player in the game, dude. He's only 32. Right. He just has been injured for so many years. Right. And people want to complain, oh, batting average doesn't count. First of all, it does count. He, he's hitting 300 now. He had 288 yeah, last year. Yes, he had 281 the year he hit 59 home runs. I'm pretty sure that's really, really good. And he does get on base. He's had a 400 on base one year, 387 and 20. Uh, what else we got? Yeah, 354. What what the hell else do you want from this guy? He's he's a hall. Yeah. He's, he's going to be a hall of famer. I hope. Why? Well, I, I think the big the biggest thing was just the injuries. You know, the, all the money you got that 300 right. million dollar contract, and then oh man, this guy's playing 50 games, 40 mm-hmm. games, a lot of lower extremity injuries. I think I'm almost positive. Matter of fact, I'm yeah, I'm positive. He changed up his off season routine mm. from lifting weights to more like yoga, yoga Pilates, type. stretching. Because he's such a big guy already, mm. you don't need to be tighter. And a lot of a lot of his injuries have been pulling his hammies, pulling yeah. his quads. Mm. Now he's like, okay, you know, getting longer, leaner. A lot of these guys are doing that. Bryce Harper's a big Pilates guy. Yeah. These guys are getting longer, leaner. Like you know what I mean? Like nah. and think about this. Think about this, Chinch. It's that bow and arrow effect when you hit. If you have muscles that could stretch with the strength you got that string now you can really launch the bow mm. if you're too tight and you're just you know now you only get a certain amount of stretch and now you get that's when you get hurt and that you know the, it's too much of a grind bro 162 yeah. it's too much of a grind on these guys bodies and a lot of those like i said you start the the the, the you know the muscle injuries of, of right. the pulls and the tweaks and all you, that you stuff. know i give a lot of credit for for stepping out and saying he did that stuff back in the day because Back in the day, it was like, oh, you know, men don't do yoga. Go into the weight room and lift and bench as much as you can. Evan Longoria was so outspoken uh, when he when he started doing it, when, when he was with the Rays. And he would, like, videotape it and be like, you got to do yoga. You got to stretch. And then it, it almost became like, oh, oh, this isn't this isn't just, like, a wimpy thing to do. This is probably more productive than, than going into the yeah. gym and banging barbells. Dude, your head. have you ever done yoga, too? Oh, it's dude, really... It is not so easy. hard. They're like, hold this pose. No, I'm like, and I'm like, no, my, my hamstring is yeah. about to pop out of my leg. Oh, my God. It's, it's, that is a grind. And then so people hard. do hot yoga. Have you ever done? I've never done hot yoga. Uh, no, but I, my, my buddy Jay Adams one time said he did hot yoga. He's like, he's like, Case, I couldn't take it anymore. No. I go, did you leave the class? He's like, no, I just laid in my sweat in the back and just laid down. And I'm like, God, it's even worse. <laughs> yeah, no. Get out of the class. I feel like I'd have six heart attacks if I tried to do that. Now, <laughs> not, meanwhile, judge, uh, judge, let's get to him. Every time he swings a bat, I feel like that's an extra four thousand dollars he's going to get on his contract because he is Bro, tearing it up. Tearing. I, I do. Th- I do, no, now you as a Yankee fan, this is a good question for you because I do think of that. 
you know, listen, if he stays healthy, he's going to be in the MVP conversation because it's right now it's between him and o- Otani. Mm-hmm. The problem with Otani, it's just nothing we've ever seen before. So it's <laughs> yeah. they almost need to do a new award, like the Hank Aaron Award and yes. the MVP. You know, you have to Cy Young, <laughs> then do the Hank Aaron Award for the hitter, and then the MVP because you got to change it now. Otani can yeah. win it every year. You should just give call it the no, Otani Award and make no, it both. Nobody's else. doing what he's doing. If he <laughs> no. stays healthy, it's right. so much tough. But you know, when you look at Judge, it's so funny because they 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 made him that offer. Mm-hmm that he turned down, but now are the Yankees going to be like, oops, we should have paid him, you know, what he wanted or a little bit more, but yeah. I don't know, man. I can't, I hope, I hope Cashman at some point says, you know what, let's do the right thing. Let's keep Judge in New York. Let's pay him what he's worth. Mm-hmm. You know, even though it's a ton of money, I get it, seven right. years, 210. Right. But listen, there's other guys getting more money than Judge. This guy's one of the best players in the game. Yeah. You know my thing about him too? I think he is... I think he, first of all, is a very smart hitter. I can, I, I don't know. I just get yeah, that, get that idea. And I think he's a good hitter anyway. He goes the other way. He's not a guy who needs yeah. to sit and spin. So uh, seriously, I, I don't mind him. I'm not as concerned about 38 year old Judge as I would no. be of some other power power hitters. I think he can make adjustments. And if you have to give him that extra year or two. You still might get like a 280, 25, and 75 in those last two years that you don't normally get from like the guys in their in in their once they get towards 40. I think he could still be a productive player when he's not the big, powerful, strongest guy in a league anymore. I, I I totally agree. That's a great point because this guy this guy's a good hitter, right? He's a good hitter. Like you go back to the home run derby, I think it's 17 in Miami. Mm-hmm. He was his he was hitting his homers second deck right <laughs> center. Yes. Unbelievable. So, like, his approach is that, like, this guy can hit, man. He's, yeah. he, you're right. He's a knowledgeable hitter. He knows what he's doing. And uh, I think he's going to age really well. And he plays right. great defense. So, yes. you're not just getting a DH right now. You're mm-hmm. getting a guy who plays a really good outfield, too. Right. Yeah, right. Exactly. And you look at these guys nowadays, the way they train and everything like that. Like you said, you, can you, you can you imagine the Yankees without Judge? No, no, you know, no. He's come on. It, forget it. The person, too. It's it's the person just yeah. as much about uh, as a great player. guy. He's a perfect Yankee, I, I think you know. You give him this contract, hopefully in two, maybe two years, a year or two, you you put the C on him too. I, I would put yeah. it right there, put a captain captain on him. And they've only had a few in in their time, you know. But yeah. think about it. He's like he's very Jeter like. He's very Mattingly like in the way he yeah. carries himself and plays a game. Why not? Yeah. You know, love it. Love right. it. We've got a lot of stuff going here. All right, so now a guy who is on the tail end. The, he's literally at the end of his career, and it's Albert Pujols, and he keeps climbing up the ladder of all-time greatest hitters of all time. It's amazing, man. What is he, 10th on the list now, over 3,300 hits? He just yeah. passed Eddie Collins, I think. Yeah. But it was great because, you know, in that game the other night against Scherzer, before Scherzer came out of the game, 2 nothing game, he tries to, uh, you know, get one by pool. It's pool. It catches it deep, which, you know, he's great at that. Shoots it down the first baseline. I think it hits the bag yeah. for, gets you know, two ribbies. You know, I mean, dude, this guy can still hit. He's... I want to say he's hitting like 280, something like that, and still driving right. in some runs. And it's a mental thing too, right? This guy's one of the mentally one of the strongest hitters of all time. So like he, he can still really hang, is. he can still contribute. Like you saw it with Yachty last night. Yachty had only had like one hit against Scherzer in his entire career, and it was a runner right. on base. And Yachty's up there, and he slapped the ball to dead center field like he like he had 15 hits off of Scherzer. These guys are right. These guys are so so great that they could still. Yeah. I'm so glad Pools out there. I don't really like seeing him on a mound the other day, but. Whatever. No, no, but I think the more the more you face guys too, the more you know the game plans. You know, the, you know, even though a, a guy like when I would face Randy Johnson, even though his stuff was nasty, I'm like, okay, I've seen that 100 mile an hour fastball, I've seen the 92 mile an hour slider. Like, at least I can have a game plan, have a shot. You know, hey, listen, sometimes I'm looking more slider. You know, even though I'm a hunt the fastball guy, his slider was hard enough where I was like, okay, I'm going to give him the inside part of the plate, look middle away, and really work off that slider. Well, if, if I saw him one or two times, I'm like, I don't have that game plan. But in that, I saw him two, three, four, five times. I'm like, okay, now I could have some sort of game plan too. And so that's how you see these veteran guys hitting veteran pitchers that are still nasty. Yeah, that's awesome. Good point there. Good analysis there by yeah, you. Yeah. Right, let's Thank keep you, it going. Thank let's you. keep I rolling. Do it, You're on fire. I do it for a living, bro. I do it for <laughs> yeah, a living. That's a fair point. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, anyway, okay, next, guys. Let's stay out west. We talk, there's so much Yankee Mets talk these days because, you know, East Coast bias represent yeah, yeah. You know, people yeah, don't yeah. like that. Um, <laughs> but the Dodgers bats are getting hot again, and they are they are the team. You, you look at them first and look at everybody else second, right? I mean. Yeah, oh, well, dude, the Dodgers, you know, they're, 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 they're kind of starting, you know, getting going. They've, they've been playing well, but you know, they're, they're what they're 25 and 12 and they're, <laughs> the bats are kind of just get going. Yeah. Right. And look at, yeah, look at the Padres and the, and the giants are right there too. But man, that, you know, just when you look up and down this lineup, let me, let me pull up their lineup really quick. Cause it's, it's, uh, it's worth, it's worth looking at, but you know, you, when you, when you go up and down this Dodgers lineup, you got Betts starting to get it going, which he came out the gate scuffing. Freddie Freeman's been swinging it. Trey Turner, you know, this guy's a stud. Will Smith can swing it behind the dish. Max Muncy has, you know, been been out, and he's he's probably the one guy that's scuffing, but he'll get yeah. it going. Justin Turner's getting a little hot. You know, Bellinger's interesting for me because yeah. he kind of got off to that hot start. I was, oh, here he goes. And, like, here he is lingering at 205 again. Yeah. So interesting to see, you know, what, what Cody Bellinger are they going to get this year. Chris Taylor doing his thing. Gavin Lux is swinging. They they just they're just so deep in that rotation with Bueller and Kershaw and, and Arias. You know those guys. They're yeah. just loaded. Don't forget I they mean, got the, the they, the they got the closer who's he's struggled the other night. But come on, you got Kimbrel back there now too. Like it's like they, yeah. they just keep yeah. reloading and don't sleep on them doing something at the break. If there's if there's a hole yeah. missing, they fill it. No questions asked. Yeah, yeah. It'll actually yeah, be interesting. That a lot of the big boy teams, Yank or, or big money teams, Yankees, Dodgers, if they all stay yeah. at the top and there's trades to be made, it'll be very interesting to see how aggressive the the you know the big money teams get with that stuff. Oh know? yeah, no, it'll be interesting to see. It'll be interesting to see. You know, another guy that I was thinking of that just going back to the Yankees real quick yeah. is that M- Michael King out of the bullpen. Yes, dude, his stuff I mean, bro, is it's like bro computerized, n- nasty stuff, dude, and he's. He's just been lights out for that man. Yeah, just oh, to- super lights out. Totally lights out and just, you know, Ben and God's kind of flying under the radar. But I think the big thing for the Yankees has kind of been, oh, wait, is their bullpen good enough? And right. you're starting to see guys like King and, yeah. you know, these guys that are that are dominating at right. the back end. And that actually takes some pressure off. You know, Chapman's getting a little older. He's in the last year of this deal. And honestly, yeah. actually, somebody made a good point. I would never want to see this happen. But if the Yankees do start really struggling – with Chapman and he's he's not doing his his best. I mean, he is in a contract year. They would have less pressure to put King in to close or somebody else in to close. Ideally, their best team is Chapman as a closer. There's not even a question. Oh yeah. But, oh yeah. But, you know, if he scuffles, you can give him you can give him three or four days off and let one of the other guys close. That's got to help you throughout the season. You know. No, it's huge. It's huge. When you look at King's stuff right now, he's got 25 innings pitched. He's punching out 37 punch outs. Got yeah. a one four. He's been lights out. Man. Yeah, it's crazy. And you know, and you and I know. You know, we've watched the Yankees get close, but mm. you know, when you have a lights out bullpen, that's that's the, game that's the difference, dude. That's the thing, game changer. It know? is. No, well, now let's say let's go back out west again because we were talking before, and it's like, wow, the Astros, they're hanging. They're still the Astros, no matter what, no matter who nope. leaves, who comes, first place. Yep. But the cool thing is about that is, you know, a lot of people love to hate the Astros, and everybody's been pissed off at the Angels for so many years for not getting Mike Trout into the postseason, and they are a game out entering play friday what like, yeah, it would be yeah, so great w- to see otani and trout on a big stage please for like no one one time yeah you know exactly well you know you go up and down that lineup when you talk about you know you talk about taylor ward and, mm-hmm. and walsh and these guys they're, they're these guys are you know th- that lineup's now just not trout and otani oh you know you got ward otani rendon's been swinging it a little bit yep Walsh is having another nice year. Yeah. You know, um, they have some guys that, that, you know, that can, you know, have some juice. So, yeah. uh, you know, I, the rotation, you know, Otani's been dominant. You know, you like to see, you know, you know uh, Detmer threw that uh, no hitter the other day. Mm-hmm. And they have, they have some guys that are some pretty good players. So yeah. I, I'm just like you, Chinch. If you're a baseball fan, you want to see Trout and Otani in October. Yeah. You don't want to be like, oh, Otani won the MVP, but they didn't make it. Trout won right. another MVP, but they didn't make it. No. Right. We want to see these guys on the big stage. Absolutely. East Coast time. East Coast time. Yeah. <laughs> East Coast time. <laughs> yes. You say that now, and then you're sitting in a in a bullpen over in Secaucus at 1.49 a.m. on, on <laughs> exactly. September 3rd going, damn it. They're too good right now. We got to stay like that. <laughs> so true. People don't so understand true. that. You know, somebody said to me once, which was very interesting. Why don't the the football networks and most of the football stuff is based in Los Angeles? 
m- nearly everything about baseball is based in New York tri-state area as far as like right. the legal offices and stuff. And it's strange because you would think it should be the opposite way because Good Morning Football on Sundays, they get up, they start their show at like 4 a.m. West Coast time. And here, you know, if you're doing a late That's show right. and, and, and that Dodgers... Um, Giants game goes 14, you're walking out of a building at 5.30 in the morning some nights. That oh happens about God. 10 times a year at those places. <laughs> so you people at home, don't 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 sleep on the work these people do behind the scenes <laughs> with these hours. It's terrible. Seems like you know that firsthand, Chase. Oh, yeah. There have been plenty of times. <laughs> the only good yeah. thing is you can drink, get from New Jersey to, to, to Long Island in about 25 quicker, minutes going yeah. 109 <laughs> when you're only <laughs> car. I don't, I don't recommend uh, that to many people. <laughs> anyway, well, so you've heard, you've heard that, yeah, right? yeah, I've you, heard that. You, yeah. a friend told you that. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there have been times where I almost flew off the GW bridge. To drive. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't recommend that to people. Um, what else we got, dude? There's so much other. This is a good storyline year so far, uh, as far yeah. as baseball is concerned. You know, because we haven't even yeah. look. I'm looking at something right now. Look, this is ridiculous. I'm looking at it right now. So this is from Buster Only. Should the Nationals trade Juan Soto? Soto, yeah. Well, what? I think they 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 try to off, they've already offered him a really long term deal for a lot of money. He's not a free agent until after two thousand twenty four, right, or, mm-hmm. or two thousand twenty four. So I don't know, oh, man. My goodness. I think if you know if uh, if you're not going to get anything for him, and you know if you can't sign him, and you're maybe not going to win right away. What do you have to? A, okay, it's a big number. If you are trading for him. What do you have to give up? Like here, take double A, take our double A, just change it to the whatever team you're taking. <laughs> like, how do you? How what do you have to trade to get Juan Soto right now? That's well, you're gonna player. have to trade. You're gonna have to trade some big time prospects. Like, you're gonna have to trade him probably a major league red, one or two major league ready guys and mm. two pro, big prime prospects. But the biggest thing for the team that gets Soto is like you want to be able to sign him. Oh yeah. Oh you right, and that's not a guaranteed like the, thing. So if you get him on a rental. You're going to lose a lot of prospects and maybe a, maybe a really good major leaguer or two. Yeah. If you know if you're trading for Juan Soto, he's so young. He's 23 years old. He's a guy you want to try and lock up for 10 years. Oh you know, it's going to probably cost you 400 some mil. Yeah, man, money. So good. To, so good to be able to hit 330 in the big leagues. <laughs> you're know, you're going to be okay, paid, bro. For a while. Anyway, speaking of young guys, dude, this draft you are extremely excited about because there's a lot of guys, a lot of dude. familiar names, just a little younger. Well, it's so funny. There's a lot of a lot of kids in this draft that are you know that are some gr- some of the really best players in the game back in the day. It's their sons. Mm-hmm. Let's start off with Drew Jones. Mm-hmm. I mean, Andrew Jones' son. They, you know, he's probably going to be the number one pick of the draft. This kid's an absolute stud. Uh, you know, big time, big time ceiling. Big, great bat, great power. Mm. Can go get it. I don't know if he can go get it like his dad because I believe there's not a person in Major League Baseball history. Mm. That could go get it like Andrew Jones. Right. And if you don't think so, go ask the Braves pitchers. Go ask the guys that played the corner outfielders. This guy covered gap to gap like you wouldn't believe. And he used to play in. Chinch, it was unbelievable. Yeah. If you hit a ball like, you know, you, you get jammed and you're hitting a little, you know, duck far into the outfield. That's usually a hit. With no. Andrew Jones, he could go back Amazing. so well. So he, he would play shallow. Most center fielders aren't playing. He plays so shallow, but he could go back so good. His jumps were so good. He would cover those little Amazing. those little bloopers. Yeah. Amazing. John Smoltz always amazing. said, "Greatest center fielder that's ever." Lived it was, in his I, I think so, dude. Yeah, the great. He's a hall, to me. He's a hall of famer. Ten yeah. years gold gloves. But Jackson Holiday too. Matt Holiday's son mm-hmm. out of uh, Stillwater, Oklahoma. This kid's an absolute stud. Mm-hmm. Left-handed bat, um, and you know one of the top talents in the class. Big dude, big kid. Just has a gr- really powerful yeah. left-handed stroke. Yeah. Um, do you know who else is is not a um, he's not a baseball player's son, but he's a football player's son. Elijah Green. Dude, I was going to bring Eric, him up. Yeah, Eric you Green. Remember, you Eric remember Green Eric was Green? A beast. Yeah, tight end for the Steelers, yeah. dude. Stud. Yeah. From Liberty College. Yeah, like. Um, yeah. This guy's a stud. Tomorrow, dude. Six Absolute three. Stud. This is, was he eighteen? Tomorrow. Uh, I'm sorry, Green. Six three two twenty five. Just a great athlete, yeah. too, man. Yeah, I, I, really. I wasn't. He, there, 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 right now, there's some swing and miss questions, but when you're 18, there's a lot of swing and miss questions for everyone, you know, at times. Yeah. Um, um, also, too, uh, Lou Collier's son. Mm, right. Cam Collier. Uh-huh. Uh, he's he's playing at a JUCO right now, Chipola Junior College. But 
He says, you know, he's going to be probably top of the first round, middle yeah. of the first round. But then Justin got- Crawford, Carl Crawford's son. Yes. People forget, <laughs> so, every time I hear about Justin, I think about how electric. Carl Crawford, he might have been the last kind of like Ricky Henderson type guy, you know? Dude, when he was yeah. with the Rays, that dude could fly, man. Yeah, the stud. And there's a, there's a local kid here named Cole Young. Yeah. This is a great story. Cole Young, uh, he's going to be a first-round pick, a shortstop. He's um, out of North Allegheny High School out here. Mm. When my son Jake was playing 12-year-old against Ingemar, right? Yeah. They brought this 11-year-old to play for their team. Bro. 11? By far. Dude, by far the best player on the field could rake. And I remember <laughs> grabbing him in the park lot on the way out, and I said, hey, man, this, you know, I remember Jim Leland always saying, hitters are born, hitters are born. I'm uh. like, this kid is born to hit. And I remember grabbing him and saying, hey, man, if you want to, you know, you got a chance to at least play Division One baseball or do some great things in this game, keep working hard. And here we are seven years later, bro. He's going to be a first-round pick out of Pittsburgh. Unbelievable. The other guy yeah. everybody loves is uh, Tremar Johnson. Have you, have you got to see any video on him? Stud, no, but I, yeah, he's a stud, too. His yeah. numbers are all, I mean, like like five-tool, like hitting numbers yeah. are high. The way they rank these kids, I, I, I still don't. I don't know. I understand. Yeah. I understand how they value. Like, what do you take on this? Your, your kids just went through. Like, there are scouting grades on 17, 16, 15 year old kids now. Like, look, here's tomorrow. I'm just pulling it up. Hit 70, power 60, run 50, arm 50, field 55, overall 60. And you're like, wait a minute, this kid's 17 years old. How do you even know that yet? How do you even know how good of a power? I mean, you can project well, yeah, you, a you little project, bit. Yeah, you project. You don't know, but you project the power. Yeah. yeah. Kevin. Kevin Parada too, Georgia Tech catcher. Yes. My son Jake, you know, played them the other night, and man, this kid is going to be a stud too. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. We did not cover something yet in this. Sean Casey's son hit a baseball as far as I have ever seen the other day. Can you take us back to this real quick? Well, dude, I, he wasn't playing against Georgia Tech, and I and I was like go, about to go to bed, and I turned on the game. It was on like the you know, Kent State streaming channel. Yeah. Like, they were like, oh, Jake Casey looks like he's on deck in the ninth. I'm like, all right, cool. So amazing. Bro, and he, he really did crush a ball. I got it. it was, I mean. I got it here. He, 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 he yeah, here it is. What, is it playing? There it goes. Boom. Yeah. Watch wow. the center yeah. fielder, everybody. Watch the center fielder. That's like. A move. <laughs> must, dude, so Sean texted me this the other night, and we're watching and watching and watching it, and he's like, Sean goes, I think that's like 400 feet. And <laughs> these days, you know, like when StatCast and all that stuff first started, it, you had to kind of be like, wait, that might not be right. That might be right. So I just have an inherent way of kind of like looking, wait, no, hold on. And Bill Ripken told, told me this. He goes, he would always look at the walls and go, if that wall is, you know, 375 and this guy hit it 14 rows in and Ripken would do his own math on how far the baseball went. And I thought right, that too. Right. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, he hit that into the gap. And I looked at the wall on this thing. It was at like three three eighty eight. Was one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you look at the center fielder, dude. Your kid hit a ball like four twenty five, <laughs> four thirty the other day. It was crushed. It was crushed. But I don't think I. I never hit a ball like that in college. Really? Yeah, right now. So. I, I, yeah. Like, I, did you ever hit a ball that far in a pros? To be honest. Uh, yeah, I think I hit a. I mean, I hit a cup. I hit one. I hit one third deck in Cincinnati one time. I hit one two rows from going out in Cincy. I crushed one in PNC Park, bro. Did you? And it, it still amazed me now. In the center field, there's a speaker that's like to the right. Yeah. I hit the top of the speaker in 2001. In that same series, oh. I got the first hit, home run. The next day, I homered. And I look at, I go to the games there now, and I'm like, yeah. I can't believe I hit a ball <laughs> off the speaker. That's a bomb. <laughs> that's crazy, right? Yeah, so yeah, that's crazy. You know, there's some guys that can, that can do that consistently in batting practice, and they can't do it in a game, right? But like, when you get a hold of a baseball and hit it far. Uh, I don't know if there are very many feelings in sports like uh, it's like ni- when you it's so nice barrel a home run. I don't care if you're in high school, Dude. little league. It's just and when you can you you know, stand there and you're like, I don't have to yeah. run, and you just start jogging. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, chance you know that feeling like when you hit it so perfect, like oh, you got that. You're like when you hit it good, you don't even feel it. It's kind of right. just like a perfect rotation of your body. The barrel catapults out. It almost like it's like a super ball coming off your bat. Like, yeah. oh my God, that's unbelievable. It, and that, that's usually the guy will say, what, what, what pitch was that? Up? I don't know, man. It just all kind of happened. I know. It's so cool. <laughs> and that's why I love my favorite thing to see is when somebody gets one and right after they're done swinging, they just, they just stand there because like, it, it's just your, your body just did everything perfectly. And then you're just like, oh, look what I yeah. did. 
And, and then yeah. you realize, oh, shit, i got to start running around the bases. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. Fucking, that ball's crushed. Oh, man, I love it. So we got to see the Casey family. You're drinking that green drink I told you the other night. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like what are you giving these kids, dude? Because <laughs> that ball was a bomb. And he's only a freshman? Freshman, oh, right? God, yeah. How, t- how tall is he? Yeah. Freshman. He's a freshman. He's like 6'1". Run, runs, I can't believe he's my son, but he, his mom must have been a good runner. Oh. He runs like a six. Runs a really 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, 60, so it's crazy. Really? Yeah, I did not know fly. that. You didn't, I didn't know he, that. Can, he can fly, bro, yeah. That is so cool. So he could yeah, beat yeah, you in a race, yeah. like what, 10 years ago, he could probably beat you in a race by then? Oh, no. yeah, bro. He was. He came out of the wound beat me in the race, dude. <laughs> I was just Can looking at, I was just looking at, uh, like, this is real for something I need to pull out and, and send to one of our guys. <laughs> the Dimitri Young line he's talking about, man, <laughs> you don't got to be fast. And he goes, you could be slower than you, Sean. <laughs> it's just a funny line. I know. <laughs> so nah, funny. whatever. Well, when you get hit, so you don't funny. have to run that hard. Oh, uh, exactly. When you put it in the gap, you can jog. Bro. <laughs> yes, you can jog. I remember my first year in Watertown, New York. Joel Skinner, our manager, came uh, up to me. I was a second round pick. I'm ready. He goes up to me. He's like, "Hey, he's like, do you have arthritis in your hips or something?" I go, "I don't know. I might. I don't know why the hell my legs don't pick up, but I look like I'm ice skating in quicksand." But you know what I mean? Wait, can I tell you something? That uh, you can't steal first, though, Chip. No, you can't true. steal first, baby. But I'll tell you one thing. All my life growing up. I used to be, in some ways, because I will, I will say I was pretty fast. I was like under a four five forty, and and my right. brother, my brother was my brother got the uh, home to first three seven. What? I swear to God, wow. and then he blew his leg out, and that's why he never went past college. But my family was pretty quick. I used to hate con- conditioning, whether it was in football, basketball, or baseball. Really? Because if I dogged it, they knew. Because I was supposed right. to finish first in, in, in every in every sprint that we had. So right. if I don't finish first in sprint, I'm either out of shape or I'm being lazy. But I, the slow guys, and there's always, not not even slow, but like everybody who's kind of in the middle, I knew you did not have to run as hard on those sprints, <laughs> you know, for football and high school and then, or baseball, whatever. And I'm like, God damn it, I wish I was slower so I could just be in the middle of the back of these drills yeah, and just go home with so, them. That's <laughs> so funny, dude. It's so great. Anyway, well, anyway, well, we got any more games? Are you going to any games this weekend, family? Uh, nope. Now that they're nope, all on I'm TV, going, that's awesome. Yeah, no, I'm going this I'm going this weekend to hang out with my buddy Brian Kane. Oh, yeah. Uh, out there in Arizona, yeah, for a couple of days. So I'm looking forward wow. to that. And then I'm work, working next week and out with the network. And Nice. Well, All's we, good, bro. We got through a show without without the gooch coming through in a back <laughs> last week. <I> know. <laughs> that was one of the so funny, dude. He so was so funny. shocked around. So, All right, man. I still got up. I got to post that clip you had too. That was so funny, dude. Oh yeah, <laughs> he just rolled in there. <laughs> anyway. All right, dude. Oh man, gonna be a good. Okay, oh bro. hey, you got to talk about first of all. If you haven't seen John Lester yet, it was absolutely yes. tremendous. Oh, so dude. talk quick about that and then who we got coming dude, on next. Dude, time. Lester is so good. The, the, the conversation is so good. One of the best lefties of all time, in my opinion, you know, with, with mm-hmm. some of his 200 and 117 win loss mm-hmm. percentage, three titles, you know, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Broke the curse with the Cubs. Great human. Um, and then, yeah, great human being, just a great guy. So yeah. tune in to Johnny Lester if you haven't. Mm-hmm. And next week, man, we got a special guest coming on, you know, one of the. Most decorated Navy SEALs of all time, Mark Devine. I mean, yeah. you know, r- author of uh, Staring Down the Wolf, Unbeatable Mind, The Way of the Seal, yeah. Kakora Yoga, just really, really, really good stuff. Oh, you want to talk about, like, discipline and, and putting your life in order. This man, first of all, learned how to do it while he was a Navy SEAL. He figured out how to live his life, and then he took it <laughs> past <laughs> It is one of the most fascinating. It will be one of the most fascinating conversations between Sean and yes. him that you ever hear. And 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 most of the stuff. He, I mean, everything that he says is something you can take yourself and and start practicing like the next day. Exactly. He's a take very it. a very impressive human being. Maybe an elite human being. Yes. Yeah. He's oh. a, he is. He is unbeatable. You know, just the unbeatable mind part of it. Pretty mm-hmm. cool. And, and he's on that podcast. He has a great podcast yeah. called the Mark Divine show. So yeah. good. So you got to check so that good. out. So Tuesday. He's got Tuesday. a few more listeners than us chance. We're moving up the ranks. Now. <laughs> we are We're though. We appreciate ranks. you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we are moving yeah, up the ranks. Thank, thanks for everybody that's listening to us. Tell your friends, subscribe, download, ring the bell, do everything good that we need. So, absolutely. All, All right, right Chief. Love you, brother. I'll love see you next bro. week. See you next week. See you, buddy.